Welcome to Do-It-Yourself Bible Study, Episode 6. I'm so glad that you've joined us on this journey as we've considered the ways that they'll know we are Christians by our love, giving from the heart. We're also using resources put together by a team that compiled the Extravagant Generosity series. So some of our study guide questions are a little bit different from what we are talking about in worship. Thank you for your patience as we've ironed out some of these kinks and even uploaded a new version of the study guide. Would you pray with me as we begin our time this week? God of vision, God of hope, fill us with your love. Fill our minds and our hearts as we seek to live into the future you have planned for us. When the present seems full of chaos and worries and anxiety, calm our spirits. Let us focus on you. Remind us of what is important. Remind us that you are with us. Be with us in this time of study. Speak to us once more. Amen. Vision and hope are inspirations of God's heart. Mission flows from the heart. I wonder if I were to challenge you to make a list of all the times in Scripture where you recall God talking about the future or God talking about God's plans, what you would list. I'm sure some of us have memorized Jeremiah 29, 11. Surely I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for you to prosper and to give you a future with hope. Or maybe your mind goes to different scriptures where God promises to be with God's people. Like in Genesis, when God calls Abraham to go, and I will go with you. Or maybe a covenant that God makes with Noah after the flood saying, I will be with you. I will be your God and the God of your descendants. Or Joshua, as he looks over into the promised land after the death of Moses, when God promises, I will be with you just as I was with Moses before you. So be strong and courageous. I will be with you. Maybe your mind goes to revelation of a new heaven and a new earth where there is no more weeping or crying, no more gnashing of teeth. Where in scripture do you find God's vision, God's promises for a future with hope? I also think about some of the prophets where God talks about a time when Righteousness would flow like an ever-flowing stream, and, or justice like a mighty water, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Take some time. Write some of the verses that really speak to you about God's vision of God's future. Where do you find scriptures that remind us of God's commitment and covenant with humankind, promising to be with us no matter what we are going through? In our study guide this week, we're invited to consider some of the scriptures about mission and what it means to do God's mission in the world. You're invited to reflect on Matthew 25 when Jesus tells a parable about, shep about separating the sheep from the goats. And he talks about how some have clothed the naked and fed the hungry we know that these are the ones where Jesus says, just as you've done to the least of these, you've done unto me. Many of our church ministries are rooted in Matthew 25. As we seek to reach out to the prisoner, as we seek to feed the hungry, respond to the needs of those around us. Matthew 25 helps to shine the light on our call as a church and our call as Christians. Similarly, Matthew 28, Jesus gives the great commission, go into all the world, baptizing them in the name of God the Father. Teach them to the ends of the earth. That is our commission as 
the church and also as individual Christians to share the love of Christ. Don't stop at the boundaries you think are the boundaries, but keep on going. In Acts chapter 1, Jesus promises the Holy Spirit to be with them even when they can no longer see him. After he has ascended into heaven, he says, you're going to be filled with God's spirit. You will be witnesses to all that has happened. Go. Don't stay still. Don't sit here and just talk amongst yourselves. You're invited to be in this ministry. So get out of here and go. Be filled with God's spirit. I wonder as you reflect on these texts, what is God calling you to do? What is God calling you to be? What is God's mission statement for your life as an individual person, for your family? What is the vision God has for you and what you're going to do in this chapter, whatever chapter it is that is presenting itself to you? Where's God calling you? But similarly, where's God calling us? As the people of Park Ridge Community Church, as the people of the Christian community beyond denominational labels or church affiliation, what is God calling us to do in this world? What is God calling us to be in this time? What is God's vision now for us? I think there's a problem with some of our ability to see God's vision a number of problems, actually. We get so focused on the moment we're in that we forget to rise above, to look out and to do some deep con contemplation and consideration of what God is calling us to do. It's hard to think past the e-learning, e the remote learning that some of us are doing, or the isolation that has been necessitated by COVID, by vaccines and the race to have one so that we can get back to normal, whatever that is. By politics and the election cycle, the news cycle that's constantly hurling something else at us to consider. I read a, a meme that said, my desire to be current on events is conflicting with my desire to be healthy and sane. We are taken over by the news that's coming at us, the injustices that are highlighted in this moment in our lives. Our, our minds are swirling so much that it's hard to take it all in, much less think about what God is calling us to do and to be. So as we consider our vision, let's listen to Jesus' sermon, a sermon on a mountainside found in Matthew chapter 6. Take a listen. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your <laughs> heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable no. than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your yes, life? Lord. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or... What shall we drink or what shall we wear? Yes, For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom Hallelujah. and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. I think that Jesus gathered this crowd on a mountainside, and he took a look at them. And he knew what they needed to hear because he starts with the Beatitudes and says, Blessed are you who are weary. Blessed are you who are persecuted. Blessed are the peacemakers. And he goes into being the salt of the 
earth, the light of the world. Jesus talks about everyday practical living and what we are to do and how we should live. And then we get to this text from Matthew chapter 6 where he says, stop worrying so much. I imagine as he was preaching this sermon on the mountainside, he started to just feel the energy coming from the crowd and he could see their wheels turning and they were trying to figure it out. How do I do this and do this and do this? How do I deal with my life? How do I deal with everything that is weighing down upon me? How am I going to have enough food to feed my family? How can I do everything that Jesus is saying I need to do to build the kingdom of God? And Jesus says, take a look at those birds. Don't you know how much God loves them and cares for them? Or the wild flowers. God loves them and dresses them. Don't you know you're much more valuable than these? God loves you. God is with you. No matter what challenges you're facing. So if you want to know where to begin, strive first for the kingdom of God and everything else will fall into place. I wonder how that first audience heard those words. I wonder if that helped the pieces fall into place as they tried to figure out what's next. I wonder if the disciples later ruminated on that sermon after Jesus had ascended into heaven and they were trying to build a church. Strive first for the kingdom of God. Everything else will fall into place. What kind of a church should we be? What kind of people should we be in this world in which we find ourselves? Strive first for the kingdom of God and everything else will fall into place. And remember, I am with you till the end of the age. Knowing God's vision includes restoring everyone to health and abundant life is big. Knowing God's vision includes justice, so much justice that it's like an ever-flowing stream. It's big. It can feel overwhelming. So what's our vision? What's our hopes? What's God's vision for our lives or for our church? We're called to be faithful. We're called to love greatly. We're called to offer all that we are and together to strive for the kingdom of God. I'm ready to strive with you, to walk with you in the path that leads to abundant life for all God's children. Thanks be to God. Amen.